what has become very clear is that our information ecosystem is drastically toxifying. There is such a strong parallel to what is happening in the physical environment. It is the negative externalities of companies and industry that actually has lots of positives. Um, you know, social media is great. I moved to the States three and a half years ago in the middle of the pandemic. Um, social media was the means by which I kept connected, you know, was able to show vulnerability, receive love, sucker. It's a way in which I found out things I might ne never have known otherwise that have been really important to my life, really relevant information. But also the drip drip of disinformation has been toxifying that information ecosystem, in part driven by commercial pressures. And it's the it's the um, companies themselves which are um, responsible. They are responsible for eroding trust in climate science, in climate focused institutions, experts and solutions because of the ease with which disinformation spreads there and actually the algorithmic advantage it has because disinformation is stuff that gets you to engage with it. It's either new and novel and therefore, you know, the dopamine hit, you're like, oh, there's something new. I haven't heard that before. Or it's because you think it's nonsense and you react to it. And actually all that signaling does to the algorithm, it says, show this to more people. And that's how fringe ideologies and fringe theories have been mainstreamed and are setting back a lot of the climate science that we rely upon as a basis of our activism uh, for action on climate change.